In this video, we'll look for ways that you can find videos that you can readily implement into your courses. And we'll do this by improving the way in which you search and filter more effectively through Google or YouTube for videos. Finally, we'll take a little bit of time to learn how to appropriately evaluate videos for appropriate copyright compliance for use in your course. The first steps in improving your search results are to use filters and improve the search terms that you use when searching. Let's start with filters. When using filters, typically we look to filter for things like the duration of video, looking for videos that are approximately zero to four minutes long, the date ranges to make sure that videos are recent enough, and whether or not a video has closed captions. Let's find out more. In this simple Google search, I'm looking for a video on the flipped classroom. By moving over to the video search area, I can go ahead and see a set of results that are a combination of monetized and popularized results ranking. I can see that there are over 1.19 million uh, results that have appeared in just a brief second. But by using the tools option here in Google, I can go ahead and I can change the duration, time, quality, and other features to refine and filter my video search results. In this case, I'm going to set the duration to short of zero to four minutes. I'm going to choose that these are only videos that have appeared within the last year or been created within the last year, although I can set a custom range that would encompass multiple years. And I'm going to choose to make sure that my videos are closed captions so that the results that I'm seeing are already, already accessible for learners who may have hearing impairments. The new set of results that I have have been filtered to only include videos that meet all of my criteria. From here on, I would go in and copyright check each of the videos before considering the value for them into my teaching practice. More on that in a bit. Let's look at a similar search in YouTube. When searching for flipped classroom videos in YouTube, I can see that a basic search already starts to return some different results. By using the filter function again, I can go ahead and filter for the upload date, the type of resource I'm looking for, the duration of the videos, and some key features like subtitles or Creative Commons licensing that might help me to use resources that are more appropriate for educational purposes. In this case, I'm going to filter by year, and I'm going to filter by duration. Finally, I'll filter by subtitles and closed captioning. And these three baseline filters, again, give me results that I can go ahead uh, and reliably use as long as they are copyright compliant. Next, let's talk about ways to improve search terms. We can improve the search terms by using greater variety and synonyms, which can sometimes be a bit taxing, or we can improve our search terms by simply using some key Boolean search term skills. Let's take a look at some of those. In this infographic, you can see that there are some different ways that we can use Boolean search terms to improve the results that we might get in any kind of search database, including Google. I can use the site search term with a colon to make sure that I'm only searching within specific sources or resources. In this case, the searcher is only looking for resources that might come from the New York Times. The next qualifier is a tilde with the word college next to it. A tilde will let you search related words such as higher education or university without necessarily having to type these in. In the opposite side of things, using quotation marks, say around a phrase like test scores, would search for that exact phrase, not each of the words separately. Using the minus sign will exclude a term from your search results, and using two periods between years or a date range will let you search for all results that occurred or were posted within that date range. Using some of these Boolean search term strategies will help improve your search 
efficiency as you look for videos to incorporate into your teaching. The final step that you'll take when looking for videos is to make sure that your videos are copyright compliant. And this can be done in a few, a few steps. When you're watching the video, make sure that the video is uploaded by the original copyright owner or the original creator. If, for example, you're viewing a video that's a clip from a television show and it isn't hosted by the network of that television show, that would fail a copyright compliance check. The video itself should not contain any infringed material, such as some music that's where the copyright is held by another owner. Typically, the credits for any copyright, any music used in a video are offered in the video description. Missing any of these, I would avoid using that resource. The video itself must have high quality closed caption. We're looking for approximately a 90% accuracy rating. And finally, when you're using your video, if it's past the copyright compliance, you yourself must cite that video appropriately wherever you use it, according to the citation standards of your program or course. In your case, this may be following in line with Conestoga APA standards. You can learn more by visiting apa.conestogac.on.ca. Each of these tips will help you make sure that your videos are accessible, copyright compliant, and appropriate for use in your teaching.